Hey guys, I hope you're having a great Sunday. I can't believe we're in February already. Where is the time going? I just wanted to hop on and connect with you guys because um, it has been a little, you know, it's been a little while and life is getting busy. So many things to do with uh, having launched the school and, you know, running the school and the mentorship group. And, you know, but I don't want to neglect you and I want to, you know, just to continue to connect with you guys. And, um, you know, let me know, drop in the comments, like, has anybody else been noticing there's been this, like, I have just been enjoying this atmosphere of peace for the last several days. Hey, Lizzie or Elizabeth Tozer, good to see you. One of my EP Ontario students, you know, but the last just really, I feel like this has been such a restful weekend. I hope you guys have been having a peaceful, restful weekend. There has just been this, like, um, for, for me specifically, just a real, like, atmosphere of peace that has kind of come in and settled you know and it's such a time of like in the in the in the world like it is a time of war and there's it's a time of battle even spiritually speaking and um you know but because when we think of like pioneering and territory taking and you know joshua went into the promised land and so we're like yes it is a time of moving in and taking inheritance but, you know, the giants didn't just roll over. Like, territory taking came with battle and war and slaying giants and facing fears and moving forward, even in spite of it, you know. And so it's been a time of, like, really pressing and moving forward for a lot of people. But the great thing about the kingdom, you know, even though these are times of, you know, it might be a time of war, a time of advancing, a time of, like, taking that territory, we still get to live in the atmosphere of the kingdom. And like, this is our inheritance and this is our portion. And so what is the atmosphere of the kingdom? But it's righteousness, peace, and joy. And so those things we need to hold on to like very, very tightly, you know? And so we have this ability to live in and to experience at all times, you know, and, and, and so it's just really needs to be our anchor and our connecting point is always going back to that place and accessing that peace, you know, and it's like, it's, it's something that we cultivate, you know, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so everything that Jesus died for us to take hold of, you know, it's like, it's, it's something that we can access. And so it's like, we need to learn and just to gain, you know, gain authority in these areas so that we can take hold of and, and access these things. So like if you are finding that you're, you know, not experiencing a lot of peace, if you're feeling unsettled, if things are just, you know, it's like we need to learn how to go into the secret place and to access the peace that's available to us in Jesus. Just want to say hello to a few of you guys, Carol Froome. And Katrina Caputo, good evening. Good to see you, ladies. You know, and so peace is something that is just so powerful. And also joy. Like joy is, um, you know, guys, I used to take myself, you know, and I still have my moments. I'll be honest. I have my moments where I take myself way too seriously. And, um, you know, I'm working on it. Like I am a work in progress. But, you know, joy is our portion. And, you know, the Bible talks about, I I used to look at those verses like in James and where it talks about like, you know, uh, consider it joy when you face various trials and these, you know, and it's just like, how can you consider it joy when you're facing trials? Like I, I never, I didn't like those verses growing up because I just didn't understand it in my life you know, previously not being in a place, a place of emotional health was very, you know, incongruent to that scripture. And so I didn't have, like, I didn't have the congruency and I didn't know how to be happy in spite of trials. But we learn that that we have this access point in the kingdom where we can have joy. There is a well of joy that we can access. And when you learn about the joy of the Lord, you know, it says that Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy more than his companions. You know, and Jesus suffered, Jesus struggled, Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered, but yet Jesus was the most joyful. It said he had more joy than his companions. And so even 
in the midst of the most difficult places and the trials, we can access this well of joy. And it's like you get to this place in the kingdom where you can be, you know, in tears and in devastation in one moment, but then in joy and rejoicing because there is a well on the inside of us that we can access. And we just, we reach in and it doesn't make sense to the world, but it is part of who we are. And Pamela, I just, you know, you're saying amen. Pamela, I just bless you. I just want to, I know you, your family is going through some really difficult things and we are standing with you. You know, we um, at Life Church prayed, we just prayed for Sal and prayed for you guys this morning um, after we went off live stream, but we're just standing in faith. And, and Pamela, I just release who I just bless, I just bless you. I'm not going to prophesy. I just want to pray over you. I just, I lift you up and I just pray that there would be just, that there would be such a, that God would loose the angels of heaven to just come, that they would so stand on guard that you would find yourself just surrounded, that there would be like, they would be like a garrison around you. And even in that hospital room, that angels would come even with healing, just that the healing balm of the Lord would be released, that there would be such a peace that would come and it would just settle in like a glory cloud, that you would find this incredible peace resting over you and over your husband. And just, I just speak life and healing in the name of Jesus that, that who, that this would be a time for the miracle working God to show up so powerfully in your life. And I am just believing and just praying for, for just Jesus best and Jesus fullness. Who, but that this would be a time, Pamela, that would be so marked with an indescribable, unshakable joy for you and your husband and everybody in your family. Yeah. This would be a time of such sweet encounter and visitation and that you would encounter Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God, your healer, and just that miracle working power. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, this is just, not where I was planning to go at all, but just, um, it's just reminding me of, of my own little journey that I had with healing that God walked me through. This is not at all. I, my intention on coming on here, I wanted to talk about discerning prophecies. So we'll see if we get there, but you know, I was just reminded I, when I had cancer, um, it was nine years ago. And, um, so nine years ago, you know, I was diagnosed with cancer and, um, you know, I had my surgery, it was colorectal cancer. I had a bowel resection and, um, the doctors wanted me to do chemo and radiation and, and I declined. I just, I didn't feel, I really felt the Lord's peace and just say no, no. And, and to, you know, just move forward in faith, knowing that I was going to be okay. And, um, you know, at my one year mark of, it was the one year after my surgery, you know, the doctors had, had done, I was getting CT scans every six months because I had refused chemo. And so they wanted to do, you know, chest, abdomen, pelvis, CT scans every six months just to, you know, make sure the cancer didn't spread. Cause they said that, cause I had said no to chemo, that my chance of recurrence was, was double of what it was, would be. They all just are guessing, but you know, I remember at that one year mark, um, having that CT scan and I was at work and, um, you know, I would always check in with the radiologist about my results, you know, one of the perks at the time of working in a hospital. And I remember the devastation I felt when he, he told me that I had a two, two and a half centimeter lesion that had just appeared in my lung, um, between my last two, you know, my last two scans. And, you know, I'm just releasing this testimony because testimony builds faith you know, and so I had this lesion in my lung and I remember like I was so afraid and I had to leave work. Like I was just, I was so upset when they told me, you know, and here it's like, okay, I've made, you know, I, someone had prophesied over me even before I was diagnosed with cancer. They prophesied, they had said, I see that you've been sick, you know, but God is going to heal you. And so I was holding on to that word, like God is going to heal me you know, and then I said no to chemo. And then here they, I am with this like result saying like, okay, you have something, you know, in your lung. 
that wasn't there on your last two scans, you know? And so it was such a time of, you know, it was just such a time of like faith and really, you know, I wanted to talk about discerning prophecy, but you know, this is a little bit more than prophecy. It's like learning to discern the voice of God and learning to discern like, you know, what are the voices? Cause you have, you know, you have the prophetic, you have the word of the Lord that was released. You have the scriptures, you know, I, the scriptures were, you know, I st stood on, on the word. I was in a, um, the church that I was attending at that time was kind of like a word of faith church. And, um, I have a really strong scripture foundation, but you know, and so I remember my doctor was like, okay, well, you know, we got to find out what this is that that's, that's growing it has appeared in your chest. And so they wanted to do a biopsy. So they said, you know, we can stick a needle in, you know, in between your ribs and take a piece out, test it to see if it's cancer or, or anything else. Like what else could it be? Um, you know, and I remember like just seeking the Lord about like what to do and just being in this place of like, you know, you have these moments where you're just in turmoil until God breaks in and speaks. And I was talking about peace earlier. And I remember the moment when I was deciding, like, do I let them biopsy it? Do I not? Like, do I go through, you know, with this, the biopsy it and then, you know, do surgery? And and I remember sitting in my car. I was working at the one of the Georgian radiology's clinics at the time where I still work. And I was sitting on my lunch break out in the car. And I remember hearing the Lord say, like, that it was okay to just watch and wait. But it wasn't just a word because like my wrestle, you know, the fear is there and the wrestle and then I have the prophetic promise. But there was just such an incredible peace that came with it. And I remember like, because you're so unsettled when you face these medical decisions and these things that are, are like, you know, can be life or death and you just don't know like what is the right thing to do. And I remember this peace settling over me. And it was the same thing that I had experienced when I was um, a year prior sitting in my oncologist office. And, you know, she's booking me in for pick lines and telling me that I have these different options of like different types of chemo that I can take. And, you know, like <laughs> how I might want to do egg retrieval because it'll ruin my fertility and all these like overwhelming things. And I just, even in that moment, I remember thinking like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? But then the peace of God, it just comes in and it just like settled. And it just settled like so deeply on me. And I just knew that I knew that it was okay for me to not do chemo. Or I knew, you know, that it was okay for me to not do the biopsy and to watch and wait. You know, and in that time, you know, I, um, <laughs> some people in my family don't appreciate if I don't know, I don't know if my family ever listens to my Facebook lives, but I decided not to tell them. <laughs> I think my mom may have forgiven me, um, you know, for not telling her, but I just decided to keep it to myself and to, I did share with my pastors at the time and, you know, some people that I knew would be able to stand in faith with me and not like really freak out and like lose it like and be like oh no you know the jenny's cancers come back and it's spread you know i really just wanted to keep it like i wanted to stand in faith and to you know move forward and and i did speak to my past like spiritual parents and i got prayer and you know and so i just but i had such an incredible peace you know guys and there's these times where i don't know how many of you have face like life or death situations. <laughs> wow, this is not at all where I thought I was going to go, but here we are. Um, <laughs> you know, but when you face like, like, have you faced life or death situations where you're just like, this is like, this is huge. And it's like, the fear is so big and it almost can be overwhelming and you almost like can, can suffocate you. But when you, you access that place of peace in God and the peace comes and I remember like the settling and it just brought this, 
you know, and so I, I told my oncologist, I was like, you know, and I don't want to do the biopsy. I just want to wait, you know, I just want to wait and just I'll come back in a few months and we'll do another CT scan and, you know, see if there's any change. And um, in that time, I just decided to, you know, I went after healing scriptures, you know, the word is medicine. So guys, you know, I prophesy a lot. I just want to make it very clear that you guys all know that like having a strong word foundation and that everything that we do and say and even prophesy, you know, sometimes we prophesy, of course we prophesy things that are, you know, not talked about in the Bible. They're extra biblical. We're talking about like the details of people's lives, but like we can never prophesy anything that is against the scripture or contradicting it. But what's the most powerful is when you take the scripture, you take the logos, the word of God, and you turn it into prophecy and you prophesy it over yourself or when God speaks to you through scripture. And it's like the written word, the logos word becomes rhema. It becomes the spoken word of God to you. And that's like when you're reading, you know, you're reading your Bible and then a word jumps off the page at you, you know, and that's like that transformation where it's like, you know, it was like the logos word is just a written word, but then all of a sudden it like enlightens your heart and you're just like, I know that God is speaking to me through that. And it's like, it becomes more than just the written word, but it's like revelation and it, it's like it gets past just your head and your mental ascent to what it means. And it gets d deep down into your heart, you know? And so I remember taking scripture and, and I took my Bible and I, actually the first time I was, di when I was diagnosed with cancer, I'd highlighted all the scripture all the scriptures on healing. And um, so I just highlighted them all. And so I took my Bible and I went and I, I put little, actually you can't even see on this Bible, it's a different one, but I have all these little tabs here. So I took a whole bunch of tabs and I just marked all the healing scriptures. Um, not all of them. I think I picked out about 15 or 16 of them. And every morning, as soon as I would wake up, I would reach over and I would grab my Bible and I would turn to those scriptures and I would read them out loud. And every night before, when I got into bed and then before I went to sleep, I would pull my Bible out and I would read those scriptures, you know, and it's like, you know, when you're sick or you're not well and, the, you know, say if the doctor gives you a prescription, you know, you, you take it like the word is medicine. You take your medicine, you take it like religiously and you take it at certain times and you do it with diligence, diligence because you believe there is a cure in it. And do you believe that there is a cure in this? And now, I mean, we're not going to, I'm not pushing like religious, you know, but this was my method. Maybe it was a little bit religious, but God met me where my faith was, you know? And so I just read it and I was like, the word is medicine and I'm going to just feed myself the word. And there was a, there's one scripture, Psalm 118, 17. And I just, it says, I, I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And I would say it over and over and over. I will not die, but I will live and I will declare the works of the Lord. And I actually, in this time, so, you know, I really, I took scripture. I took it as medicine. I also got deliverance. Um, you know, I had gone to a deliverance. Um, it just happened like the day after they found the lesion in my lung. I went to a deliverance workshop at Catch the Fire and discovered there was a spirit of infirmity connected to it. So between deliverance, you know, in the scripture you know, and then I went back for my check and I remember I was like, okay, I'm going to watch and wait. I'm going to watch and wait. You know, so we booked me another CT scan. I think the first one was in April. We booked one for in July. And I just remember just waiting and I had such a peace. And it was like the peace of God just came on me. And I just, and I just kept going to work. I just kept going to work, going to church, doing my thing. And I just was able to like live and cope and function because I just had this place of like, it was like the fear lifted, you know, fear is a spirit, you know, guys, we really have nothing to fear in death. 
we have nothing, nothing to fear in death. You know, we don't, Paul says, you know, <laughs> I wish that I could go and be with Christ. Like he says, but it's better that I stay here for your sake. And, you know, it's kind of the same way with me. You know, I'm living a life of impact. So it's better that I be here and that I live full of years and, you know, continue to equip people and raise them up. But for us to go on is better for us because there is no more fear and there is not, but we don't want our lives cut short, you know? And so take the word and fight the good fight of faith, but know that you just fight and you fight and you fight and you just believe for the best outcome. You believe for your healing, if that's what you feel, you know, to do. And, but you know that no matter what, our outcome, when you know Christ, when you know Jesus, You know, and I've worked in, um, you know, I've worked as an ultrasound technologist. Wow. This is, I was, I was the third time saying it, but this is not at all what I was planning on talking about. But story time, I guess. <laughs> I was going to talk about prophecy. Um, you know, but I, you know, so I'm an ultrasound technologist. I work part-time at a clinic. Um, and, but I worked most of my career in a hospital that came to the end during uh covid and um yeah pandemic stuff but most of my career so i've met a lot of people who've had life ha have had like life after death experiences and near death experience so like when i hear people tell me their medical history you know some people have some pretty incredible stories and so I like to ask those questions and, you know, I am prophetic. So I have a way of like, you know, fishing out the ones who have, but I have heard incredible stories from multiple patients over the years of like their transition, people who have died and have come back. And I would say probably, I, I can't know exactly, but at least probably at, at least, I don't know, six, eight, 10 people probably closer to 10. I, I forget, you know, I've, I meet thousands of people through my job, but the incredible stories that people have shared of, you know, being in life or death, like one, one, one patient shared with me that he, he actually drowned as a child and he was, he was, um, like he was gone for, I think they said at least 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And he, you know, died went, met Jesus, met some, uh, some relatives that had passed on and then came back. They revived him. And then other patients, I remember one patient just sharing with me that like the feeling that came over her as she was, as she was crossing over to the other side, she said, she just like, there was so much love. She said it was such a perfect love and peace and light and she said it was the most incredible feeling that she had ever had. And she was just going, she was going towards the light. And she said she wanted to go, like she really wanted to go. I mean, but she was like, she was, she was probably in her forties or something. Like she was too young, it wasn't her time. And then a family member had brought her, had done something to like bring her back. And she said that the sense of loss she felt from like crossing over and then coming back. Like she didn't want to come back because it was just, it was just so incredible. And uh, <laughs> this is, <laughs> wow. You know, I guess I started by talking about peace and you know, what greater peace is there to break off the fear of death from our lives? You know, and so, but I've heard multiple stories and my point in sharing that is that Every single person that I've talked to who has crossed over and then been brought back, they no longer have a fear of death. It's gone. Because they know that there is no fear in it. And so it's, you know, but we fight the good fight of faith and we believe for the best outcome believe for the best outcome and we believe for healing. But, um, 
yeah, anyway, that was just... <laughs> Guys, uh, thanks for tuning in with me. We got 17 of you on here, and I'm just like really, really great with these tangents. Honestly, I this is not what I was going to talk about. You know, I wanted to talk about, but I hope you guys were blessed um, by listening. I just want to say hello to some of you guys. Glory Norija from Puerto Rico. We have Ella Ware from Alabama. Kara Welk. jean Vieve Dion. So we got Ontario, Quebec. We have Louise Van Van Delden. We've got Australia, you know, and the, we've got a Emerging Profits Australia school that is launching in two months. So if you know anyone in Australia who, I, um, I feel like there's, I might be getting the geography wrong. I, I don't know if it's Brisbane. I feel like there's some people in Brisbane and then maybe there's even people from Melbourne who are going to the school as well. So that's really awesome. And oh, Pamela, you're still here. Awesome. You know what, Pamela? That was for you. Just, yeah, Pamela, you're so loved. You guys are so loved. You're so covered. And uh, you're so loved and you're so covered. Yeah. Uh, Diane Wallace, hello. Oh, we got Mickey. We've got Mickey LaFan from Australia. We got two Australians on here. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know, so what I really wanted to talk about <laughs> was um, discerning prophecy because um, actually that's what I'm planning to talk about in uh, my mentorship group tomorrow. So maybe I'll just, you know, leave you on that cliffhanger and just let you know that if you want to learn about, you know, discerning prophecy and, you know, because, you know, it's not like Old Covenant where it's like, you know, the true prophets and the false prophets are like judged based on whether the word comes to pass because you can be a true prophet and you can give a, a word that doesn't come to pass and you can be a false prophet and you can give an accurate word and it's about the fruit and it's about the spirit and there's so much more involved in this whole topic of discerning prophecy. And so we really need to, you know, we need to grow in wisdom. We need to have our senses, you know, exercised and trained in the discerning of spirits. And so we have to understand, you know, I've had people in front of me prophesying words that are good and they are accurate. And yet, even though I know it's a good word and it's not about what they're saying, but yet my spirit is so agitated because, you know, I, I just know that there's something, there's something spiritually, you know, and sometimes it's a, you know, it could be, uh, it could be that they're, you know, that they don't have good fruit in their life, or maybe there's some kind of impurity or uncleanness or a motivation that just isn't, you know, drawing people to God, but it's drawing people to them themselves. And, you know, guys, it's just really important to learn and to discern you know, and it's not so that we look at people with judgment and skepticism and say like, oh, you know, oh, Jenny, you know, you got that word. It didn't resonate with me. So I think, you know, maybe you're a false prophet or, you know, maybe you think that there's something a little off with, you know, you know, maybe my motivation or something that I do that, you know, you think, you know, and, and it's not for us to look at people and judge them and be all skeptical, but we have to be healthy but know that there is a responsibility in, you know, 1 Corinthians 14, it says like we could, we should, we can all prophesy. It says like pursue love and earnestly des like desire the spiritual gifts. I think I may have got that mixed up. But anyway, love first, then prophecy, because we have to prophesy out of love, you know, but you know, but we, there is a responsibility in the new covenant. It talks about later on in first Corinthians 14, it says like, let two or three prophesy, like in a, you know, in a church setting, let two or three, three prophesy and let the others judge. So there's a judge judging or a discerning of the words, you know, we see in part, we know in part, you know, and, um, you know, it's really beautiful. Like when you have like, actually in my church this morning at Life Church in Bracebridge, there was a great opportunity where, you know, Pastor Dan opened it up and said, and just allowed like, hey, does anyone want to prophesy? And so there were a few people in the church, you know, who stepped up and there was an opportunity. He opened it up for other people to come and, and you know, 
be activated and to prophesy, you know? And so we listen to those, you know, those few people who release the words and then there's a responsibility on, you know, on the leadership team and those of us who are sitting and just listening and, you know, to just discern. And it's not to say like, oh, oh to be judgy and be like, oh, well, that wasn't a good word. We didn't like that. Or, oh, you know, or, or, you know, it's not a performance thing, but it's like, it's just was really awesome to see people be able to step out and to get activated. But, you know, we have to learn and, and grow because, you know, I, I, I equip people in like, you know, do prophetic gift training and, you know, cause I want people to learn and grow, you know, but some people really have a hard time stepping out because they are so afraid they're going to get it wrong. They're like so afraid that they're going to make a mistake. And they're like, well, how do I know? How do I know it's God? How do I know it's not me or the enemy? You know, and there's that like discerning of like, cause there are different sources and guys, when we're learning and we're stepping out, we do make mistakes and, and we all will get it wrong from time to time, myself included. You know, the key to that is to be humble and be willing to apologize and be willing to clean up our messes, you know, when we do speak, if we do speak out of turn or we do speak, you know, out of our soul or rather than, you know, out of, you know, a word of the Lord, you know, and so it's like, that's where we have to be really, like, really careful, you know, and so that's why, you know, um, you know, for example, Pamela was on here earlier and I just made it very clear. I wanted to pray for her and bless her, you know, and release God's goodness, but I don't have a word, like, I don't have a Thus saith the Lord, you know, this is how the situation is going to turn out. But, but, you know, we don't want to be like so moved with compassion that we present what we want, you know, or what the person in front of us wants as if it were a word of the Lord, you know, and I've erred in that we, we all make mistakes, you know, and so there is this needfulness, you know, to just to be aware of some of the different things, you know, that can kind of like throw us off track and, I think I'm I'm not gonna go into the rest of what I wanted to to talk about on that topic because I have been talking for quite a long time and I'm gonna do some prophetic ministry. But yes, Louise, be humble. You know, be humble and we have to be willing to clean up our messes. And here's the thing, like I don't like making mistakes and um, you know, none of us like when we make mistakes, none of us like when we have to apologize, none of us like to like, especially if we have to do it publicly, but if you're going to be a prophet or you're going to be a prophetic voice or just someone who prophesies, there is that responsibility and we are going to make mistakes. So just embrace it. You know, it's not even for the prophets, pastor, teacher, evangelist, you know, whatever you're called for, we're going to make mistakes and there are times where we're going to make mistakes and we're going to make big mistakes. And so the bigger the mess, the bigger the mistake, the bigger the, the cleanup and the bigger level of humility that we're going to need to step into it. And so embrace not just a little bit of humility, but like really big humility so that, you know, it doesn't knock you down and you don't get to the point like beyond recovery where you're like, oh, I screwed up. You know, some, I used to be so hard on myself was so hard on myself. And, you know, I talked earlier about, you know, we have to have joy and we need to like, sometimes I need to lighten up. Like I, I need to not take myself so seriously, you know, and when I make a mistake, guys, it's not easy. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, but I've had to learn to like, just to like lighten up and just to step in and to do the right thing. And so we, these are lessons that we all need to make and we all need to be willing to do that. And we need to have grace for other people and for their mistakes and their messes. And, um, you know, when I was first starting out in the prophetic, I, um, so when I was at, I was at a uh, Jubilee celebration center. That was my previous church. Those pastors are now actually in Taiwan at the moment, but, um, I was there for, I think about seven years and I remember I was so afraid to step out. And I remember Pastor Zach saying to me, and it was such a word of wisdom. He was like, Jenny, he said, you know, like, don't be so afraid of making a mistake. He said, because he said, when you get it right and you give a good prophetic word, you don't get the credit for it. He said, and so if you don't get the credit for giving an accurate prophetic word, he said, don't take the credit when you give a bad word. <laughs> That's not to say don't clean up if you make a mistake, but it was just that sense of like, you know, like, 
you know, because if we do, you know, here's the flip side. If you're like, oh, shoot, I made a mistake. Oh, I suck. Like, I'm really horrible. I should never like step out. You know, we make these judgments and these vows and then we don't, we don't want to step out. The flip side of that is then we get into pride and arrogance if we do get it right. And so when people are like, oh yeah, that was a really good word or that was really spot on or accurate, then we start to get into, you know, into that pride and arrogance be like, oh, well, you know, yeah, my gift is really good. And then, you know, you can get a big head. And so it's like, the false humility and be like, oh, I don't want to try. I don't want to step out because I don't want to make a mistake. Or it's the same. It's the other side of the same coin, the pride and the false humility. You know, and so I didn't realize actually, because I was so bound down by false humility and insecurity. I didn't know I had pride, <laughs> honestly, you know, because, but it's the same thing, you know, because that will get you into performance you know, and so we have to like, you know, be willing to step out, you know, and what is this all for? This is why I won run my prophetic mentorship group and, you know, also my emerging profit school. If you're in Ontario, we're almost a month in, but it is not too late to join. But right now I want to talk about the prophetic mentorship group and activating people in the prophetic. Yes, I'm called to raise up profits here in, in Ontario and Canada, but I am equipping people in the prophetic because the Bible says it's not just for the prophets. We can all prophesy. And I want to see generations raised up with the prophetic word in their mouth. And it's not just so that we can impress people with prophecy, but the prophetic is about intimacy. It's about connection with God. It's about knowing who he is. It's about knowing his heart. And being able to, we don't have to go through the prophets. My job, my job as a, as a prophet, as an emerging prophet, is not to be the earpiece, you know, for you all so that you have to come to me and I tell you what I think God is saying. No, it's to equip you to know that you can hear him for yourself. And so that's what excites me. I mean, yeah, it's exciting to give a, you know, accurate prophetic word, but it's way more exciting to empower the body of Christ because this is what the true apostolic and prophetic is. It's about the apostolic. It's empowering people to do the gospel, to do the work of the kingdom. And I want to empower you to do the work. It's not just about me. We all need to rise up. God wants a prophetic generation, not just a few prophetic superstars who have the boldness and courage. But I want to see multitudes rise up with boldness and courage. And I am looking for those who are hungry and who want to have the, the, the passion on the inside of them ignited. I want to blow on the flame of your passion and get you stirred up and get you activated so that you can go out and you can impact your sphere of influence because there are people in your life that you are called to influence that I am not called to influence. There are people that you can touch that I cannot touch. And so I'm making it real easy because I am offering a discount on my prophetic mentorship group. Have you been sitting on the fence? Guys, my prophetic mentorship group, it's actually generally, it's, it's even the regular price is not that much. For six months, we meet every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom every Monday. And then I do occasional like Saturday morning prophecy hours as well where we do, you get to prophesy and I do some coaching. But for six months of mentorship, the regular price is $500 for that. But for, until Valentine's Day, it's only going to be $444. Only 444. So I'm offering a discount so that I know we're already in February, but it's still the new year. Like, let's start the new year off. Are you tired of just being stuck in the same old place? Do you feel like your relationship with God is dry? Are you going from prophecy call to prophecy call to prophecy and following all these prophetic people because you want to like, get prophetic words, but really God is like, you're drawn to the prophetic and all these prophetic people because the prophetic is in you and you need to get activated and equipped so that you can step up and be all that God has created you to be. Is that why? I think that might be why you're attracted to the prophetic and following all these prophetic people. You know, and if you don't feel like I'm the one who's supposed to, you know, teach you, mentor you, 
find someone else, but find someone. You know, I'm part of the Global Emerging Profits community. And I mean, that's a great community as well. You know, so if you want something bigger and more expensive, you can join that one. <laughs> but like, you know, I love, you know, pouring into people, you know, so consider it. I have, um, I have students in the group. I have students from Newfoundland, from Newfoundland, British Columbia, Hawaii, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Germany, and then, you know, all throughout Ontario, I've had students from California, from all over the place. So it is not just for those here in Ontario. And so I would love for you guys, you know, to jump in and to be part of that. And I do actually have, I'll, I'll post the link in the comments just for the application form. I do have a payment plan, but the discount is not on the payment plan. The discount is for, you know, people just paying $444 up front and we're meeting tomorrow. So if you want to jump in and join us, come on, like meet us, meet with us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Um, okay, I want to prophesy over Genevieve, Genevieve Dion. I have not seen you for a while. I know her from the Emerging Prophets world, but it's been a long time since we've connected. Yeah. Yeah, Genevieve. <laughs> yeah, Genevieve. Yeah, I see you picking up the torch. You know, it's like, who? You know, you have you have been ignited and you I just see you I see you I see you doing laps like going all over Quebec and I see the Lord setting like I see him I see him like literally setting a trail for you and he is like charting your course. And I just see him sending you on divine appointments into places. And, you know, I just see, I see him really like, he's so been like fanning the flame that's on the inside of you. And it's like, it's getting hotter and hotter. And I see you getting to this place, you know, and where you're just like, you don't even like feel like you fit in, in, in Quebec and in that area that you're in. Because it's like, well, where, like, it just seems so dry and it just seems like the people around you are not, you know, like you're out of place. And I just see like, yes, I hear that the, the fields are, are ripe unto harvest, but they are dry. And, and it just, I see the picture of like Samson and the foxes, you know, where Samson took the foxes and he tied their tails together in the torches and sent them out to the field. And it's like, I see you like that, like the, the fox with the torch going out into the fields and there being such an impact. I just, and I also see this thing of like Jeremiah on you where it's like, you know, it's like there's been such a long season of holding back and such a long season of holding within that it's just like the word is on the inside of you, that prophetic utterance. It is who you are. It is in your DNA. And you, there has been like, um, there's been like a bit of a weariness, but it's kind of feeling more like a, like a holy agitation in your spirit because the word and the revelation needs to be released. And I just see you, you know, I see you like a spitfire and I see you releasing the words as you go, as you're going about your business, as you're going on these adventures, as you're going on, you know, these things that these activities and these things that you planned and are part of your life. But as you go, as you go, the divine appointments in the connection, there is a new boldness on you to release the word. And I see you just, it's like in, in such a way that it's not like, it, it, it's, it's, it's so sharp and it's so t on target and on the mark, but it's like, you're able to deliver it in a way that it's just like, like, it's just, it's so unoffensive. It's like, people don't even know that you just release the word of the Lord, but I just see you like just releasing these words and then hitting the target wherever you go. And like, it actually you know, it's like these, these words that are so on point and on target, but there, it's not just, it's not just good words, but it's the, the authority that you carry Genevieve and that you, the breaker anointing. And that as you release it, you are setting your, your, you're setting off like these, these domino reactions. And so it's like the impact that you have by releasing what the Lord has put inside of you, you will never know 
the incredible impact on this side of eternity. It will not be until the other side because these words are going to start. The ripple effects of you releasing your voice are going to go out and they're going to affect multitudes. You have no idea. So I just bless you with a boldness and a courage to go forth. I just hear mighty woman of valor. Yeah, you are rising up and you're taking your place. Yeah, you are. You are. You're so on target. You're so on target, Genevieve. Who? Um, okay, Michelle Lineros. I just see your comment. Um, I'm going to post the link in, I will prophesy over you actually, but I'm also going to post the link once I finish this live feed. I can't do it while I'm on, um, but it is somewhere else on my personal page, but I'll post uh, the application form. But Michelle, yeah, yeah, who? I just hear the Lord saying like, I have got you. I have got you. And, um, <laughs> Wow, I just, and I just hear him saying, stand still and see my salvation. Stand still and see my salvation. And I just, I actually see him giving you a real wisdom in this season, Michelle, to like, really to, um, to properly discern which battles to engage in and which ones to walk away from. I see that you are like, um, you have this like, you're like this justice warrior and you have this real sense of like, you know, you, you would fight for the underdog injustice just like, you know, is such an irritation. And I just see this, like this sense of like, you have that real, like that, like, right. What is right? What is wrong? This real sense of like, you know, righteous indignation about some things, but I just see the Lord, you know, really giving you, um, you know, wisdom and even, even some like, mentoring kind of voices that are going to speak into your life and to help you know which fights are to engage in because there are some some are distractions but some are assignments and um you know and I don't mean fight like brawling and pettiness but like you know which ones because you know there are so many things that pull on your heartstrings because you are you know like Jesus who was moved with compassion so you are moved with compassion and like Jesus who was so moved with righteous indignation and overturned the tables. So you have righteous indignation about things that grieve the heart of God. I see that like you, 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 your heart breaks for things that break his heart. So when I say like, pick your fights, I'm not talking about like, Oh, you know, that there's been any kind of pettiness, but it's about, you know, just knowing that, that there are some things that he has called you to. And there are some things that, you know, um, though they are, you know, good causes and that you could, you could want to like pour your energy into them, you know, that they would take away from, you know, what he has set for you because, um, there's different, you know, <laughs> you're a warrior, like you're a warrior in the spirit, but he wants to bring, you know, he wants to like rightly divide your energy and your resources into, you know, so that you're not depleted by, you know, the, the fight in the battle is like, it's always a, an outward, like constant, like giving, pouring out. And it's like, it, it, there's so much virtue that comes out of you that it can literally, you know, suck the life out of you. And so, but he really wants to like, you know, there's time for that, but then there's also these times of like refuel and rest. And I just see him, I see him pouring into you, Michelle. And I just can see, I can see an angel on your right and your left. And they're like holding these buckets, these buckets. They're like pitchers, like jugs. And they're just going to like pour into you. But it's like, there's this needfulness for a stillness. And so I just see this kind of like, almost like... <laughs> Like he wants to lasso you and put you in place. And, and I just hear this like, hold still, like hold still for a second because there is this blessing that he is going to pour out and to refuel. And he says that the times of rest and stillness and refreshing, they're not wasted time, but he wants to really rejuvenate you. And so I see him, yes, Michelle, that is for you. That is for you. So you'll have to go back and re-listen. But he is pouring into you. And so it's going to really re-energize you. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Lanieros, that word was for you. 
yes, yeah, so you have to go back and you can give me feedback later about whether that, that resonates. Yeah, Holy Spirit told you to come back. <laughs> yeah, and guys, if I ever prophesy over you, I do, I do appreciate feedback. You can let me know if it resonates. Um, either comment on the Facebook feed or you can also like send me, you know, even just like a private message as well. And um, yeah, awesome. Okay, spot on. Okay, I appreciate that. But you know what I said earlier, we don't get to take the credit. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit for... Um, oh, Michelle's in the UK. Okay, so I've, you know, I don't, I've never connected with you. I don't think Michelle. So I love that the word goes out to other nations. This is really a season of expansion. And God is like, God is doing a new thing, guys. You know, the um, Emerging Prophets Ontario School that I launched, that launched on January 11th. So this is the first Canadian one. Last year, Emerging Prophets had their first international school launched, and that was in the UK by Jenny Hockley. So she was the first international school. And um, so if you're in the UK and you, you want to connect, like, man, she's amazing. So to be part of that, that school, you'd have to, you know, wait till next year. But um, just incredible that there's Emerging Prophets launched in the UK. And then I launched on the 11th, the second one here in Canada. And then Deborah Johnson launched one in Jamaica, I think on the January 15th or 16th, whatever was the Monday. And then we have uh, Sonia is going to launch one in April in Australia. So we went, you know, they went from being just in the US to last year, UK, now Canada, Jamaica, and Australia is coming. So guys, this is... This is not just, it's not just a little, little, little side thing. It's not just a little one off. Like this is a move. God is doing something powerful. You know, he is, it's, it's about the releasing of the prophetic. And, you know, so I mentor people and, and, you know, cause we want the whole body of Christ to rise up and to understand the gifts of the spirit and that they can prophesy, but also about healthy prophets. That's really the focus of the emerging prophets. It's about getting the prophets healthy, getting them healthy, getting, the, getting, getting us healthy so that we can be heard. Because you know what, guys, if we just have a gift, but we don't have the character to, you know, back us up, people don't want to hear. They don't care how good our gift is if we don't have character and good fruit from our lives in ministry. So we want to get healthy profits. So that is um, super, super important. Yeah, Tamara, especially here in Canada. We need a healthy prophetic expression because, you know, the religious, you know, atmosphere in this nation has not been very um, welcoming and conducive as a whole. Like that's a general statement, not about one specific church, but it has not been receptive in as a nation to the prophetic voices. And there has been that, you know, there's been that overarching, that tall poppy syndrome, and it comes with the Canadian you know, false humility and kind of socialist values where it's like, oh, everybody, you know, just be kind of, you know, everybody should just be kind of at the same level. And, you know, and then when people try and get ahead, there's been kind of a real pushing down and a cutting down. And it's really prevented, um, you know, a really strong and healthy prophetic expression from rising up. And, you know, what it's kind of done is because, you know, the prophets have been pushed down and cut down and pushed out so much you know, sometimes it was, you know, of, of our own unhealth, but sometimes it was just of the religious system and people being afraid of the messes that prophets make. And so some of them have gone off and, you know, started their own things or doing things in rebellion and disconnected. And, you know, we want to bring it back. We want to bring, you know, the fivefold to, you know, full maturity and in connection with the local, you know, the local body of Christ, but, um, you know, in Canada, I want to see Canada change. But, you know, I'm not just called to Canada. I'm called to the nations. So I'm really excited for what God, you know, what God is is doing. And he is just like, yeah, Diane, you know, you're Canadian. You know, it's been brutal. It has been brutal in this nation. And, um, you know, we won't give too much attention to the negative, but but we're in a different season and the winds are shifting and guys, we have the victory. Like we, this is really what, you know, God has really been, you know, causing me to go into a deeper place of intimacy. You know, as we go up higher, as we're, 
you know, we, we have this journey from like when we get called, we get our prophetic words and, you know, and then, you know, we actually, re you know, reach the say off for me, it'd be like office of prophet. Cause that's what I'm called to, you know, and there's this journey of like, you know, going up and, and, and it's not an easy thing, but it's a process that we all have to go on. And, you know, the higher, the higher you go up, you know, the realize, the more you realize you have to get a stronger and stronger foundation because as you, you know, you move up, what, whether you're a prophet or not, as you move towards the destiny, the, you know, that top, whatever God, whatever your palace is that God, you know, has called you to, the higher you go, you know, the more the cracks in your foundation are going to be revealed because there's a pressure that comes on as we're going after the things of God. And so the secret you know, the secret is in intimacy and it's just like the pressure of ascending, especially in Canada and feeling the, the territorial things like the weight of, of, of just of the atmosphere, you know, it's just like push into God, just having to push in deeper and deeper. You know, the words prophets have been saying, like, this is a year of ascension of open doors of ascending. And it's just really is like ascend into the secret place, ascend into that place, the throne room of God, where it says that we're seated in Christ. We need to learn how to access that place in intimacy. Guys, you can feel, and I've had to learn this because I'm a feeler. And so I, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm like a fire hose right now. So we'll see how long this lasts. Um, I'm, I'm a feeler. So I feel atmosphere. So I feel the good. I feel the bad. I feel like I feel what God is doing. I feel what the enemy is. I feel like all kinds of things, you know, you have to learn how to like tune in and, and tune out some things. And, you know, cause sometimes, you know, the pressure of what the negative and what you feel, especially as you're going after the things of God, it's like, it's like a, it, it's like a weight in it and it can be so strong. And so what do we do? we don't retreat from the enemy, but we come up higher and we retreat into Christ and we retreat. So, you know, you feel this stuff, this second heaven stuff that's swirling and you feel the weight you feel, you might, it might feel like depression. It might feel like fear. Sorry, I got to get a little more comfortable. My leg is falling asleep here because I'm talking too much. Um, well, maybe not too much, just enough, but you feel all the negative stuff and, um, you know, and so you have to rise above it or, you know, you'll find yourself in a place of, of like depression and fear and just like overwhelm. And so, you know, you, you know, so it's like, get above the storm. That's really what it is. We have to rise above the storm in him. And so come up to that higher place, you know? And so I've really had to like learn, you know, as I'm, you know, now the Canadian school, you know, Canadian Emerging Prophets founding school director. It's, um, you know, it's, I've had to like really sharpen some, some skills and, and, and that's like coming up to a higher place. And so it's really pressed in. And so a real key for access to me has been worship, you know, and, um, I'm still looking for someone to come and, you know, volunteer to teach me how to play the keyboard properly because I'm a little bit stuck, but it doesn't matter. I can play a couple things in the key of C. All I need are four chords in the key of C and I can play them over and over and I can access a heavenly realm and I can come up, you know, and it's like you feel it and it just pulls you. It's like, we don't have to live under, we don't have to live under this because Jesus, Jesus, he defeated hell and death. He made the enemy our footstools. We trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And so we don't have to stay here and wrestle all this stuff. We get to just, we got to focus ourselves and get into Christ, get into our position because we didn't, we weren't just like buried. We were crucified with Christ. We were buried with Christ. We were raised with Christ, but we're also ascended with Christ. So it's not just Christ in us, which is amazing and gives us authority while we're here on earth, but it's us in Christ. So, you know, we're in Christ seated in heavenly places in that place of perfect victory. And so, you know, God said to me one morning and it was great. It was amazing because he said it to me and then someone sent me a message and he just said, Jenny, you are a queen, straighten your crown. And then someone sent me a message and said, Jenny, you're a queen. 
And it's this realization, you know, so often, you know, especially us feelers, guys, I don't know, like I got a lot of different ways of like tuning into Holy Spirit, but I kind of feel like those of us who are feelers have an extra burden to bear. And I don't know, those of you guys who are not feelers, like count yourself blessed because it's like, I just, I still haven't figured out where the off switch is. It's probably, you know, around back where I can't reach it. But, you know, it's because you feel everything. You know, it's like you just feel so much. And so we have to learn to tuck ourselves in Christ and come up higher. Because we're safe. We're secure. We're not victims. We're more than conquerors in Christ. And in this place of ascending in intimacy and ascending in worship and coming in, it's like you can just... Leave behind, leave behind. And I've, I've had to do this over and over again because I can feel, I can feel my stuff. I can feel stuff out there, you know. And <laughs> to Tracy, you're like, I'm glad I'm not a feeler. But, you know, some of us, some of you guys actually are feelers and um, you may have shut it down. So I actually just feel like saying that, you know, I shouldn't be so hard on feeling because it is a gift. It is a gift. It is a language of heaven. It is a blessing. You know, it's not a curse. So, you know, I am grateful for, you know, I am grateful for it in general. <laughs> I don't want to seem ungrateful, but you know what? I actually feel like this is, I feel like there's some people who are watching right now and you don't think you're a feeler. Um, but actually the problem is you are spiritually, emotionally constipated. And um, yeah, so you know how people... You know, sometimes people go through hard seasons and they get to the place where they're like, oh, like someone died, but they just can't even cry. Like they have no, like they've shut themselves down. Like they have no emotions. They're actually, I feel like there's a couple, I feel like there's at least two people who are watching even right now that that's actually what's happened to you spiritually where you were feeling and you were so consumed with so much emotion. So think back earlier in your, in your life. Did you tend to feel things more deeply and be more aware, more empathetic, more compassionate, but then actually maybe you had, you know, I think what happened in some cases, I feel like someone here, it's like you, you had so much unsanctified mercy, you felt everything and you just felt like you had to like, you know, and so it just overwhelmed you because you didn't know what to do. And it just like that you shut it down. So some of us have shut it down. Whew. Jill, maybe that's for you. Who? As we shut it down. And God wants to reawaken it. He wants to reawaken it. And he wants to reawaken you. Because we don't want to throw away any aspects of how God has made us or shut them down. So that just because we didn't know how to use it or how to steward it or people didn't show, you know, didn't show us. Yeah, Leanne, you like that Constip spiritually constipated, constipated emotions. Ask God for that, that, that spiritual enema if you need one and just like let him just come and clean out the blockages so that you can flow freely with the spirit. Whether that's in feeling or maybe it could even be in seeing because I know that there are a lot of people who you know, you're born and you're a child and you're such a strong seer. You see things, you know, not just the angelic, but also the demonic. And then, you know, for kids, it, you know, sometimes it just is too much for them. And so they get so afraid that they will actually just learn how to turn it off and to shut it down. But God wants to reawaken these gifts so that we can be the fullness of who he has created us to be so that we can have our impact. And, you know, and just know because... You know, if I go out, like, you know, sometimes I can go to the grocery store and I'm like, oh, I was feeling so great at home. It was just beautiful and peaceful. And, you know, there's like angels that stand in certain places in my house. And, you know, some of them go with me, but some of them stay at my house, you know. And so when I'm at the grocery store, I don't have so much control over the atmosphere. And sometimes I'm like, wow, I just feel so great here. And then you go out and it's like, you feel like, the anxiety, the emotions, the, yeah, Tracy, I noticed your little typo there. That's great. Um, <laughs> it made me laugh. Um, you know, but it's, 
the feeling is not so that we like are tormented by it or come under it or that it's more powerful for us, but it's so that we can learn like, hey, guys, we're the carriers. We're, 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 the, we're the ones who bring the atmosphere of the kingdom. You know, I started this time of whatever this time is of teaching, of talking about talking about peace. So if I'm going to the grocery store and I'm feeling the swirl of people's fear, anxiety, maybe it's more now because the prices of food are like so high and people are maybe having a lot more kind of fear of like, oh my goodness, how am I going to be able to afford this? You know, but it's like, but we're carriers of peace. And so we get to release the atmosphere. We get to shift it. You know, people should be able to come into our presence and, you know, I do this better at sometimes than others, you know, certain environments are easier for me. But, you know, we should be able to, people should come into our proximity and they should be able to feel the, you know, atmosphere of the kingdom. Like they should be able to feel it radiating off of us because they're going to feel something, you know. And so we have the power to release and to shift things. Yeah. Guys, you're so much more powerful than you know. And I want you to discover like how powerful you are and what is on the inside of you. So, um, yeah, just one last, you know, one last go, I'm going to put the application form in the comments of this video, but if you guys, any of you want to join the mentorship group at a discounted rate, um, I, uh, we meet Monday nights from seven to 9 PM on zoom. And then I'll have an occasional, like, you know, Saturday morning meeting or something, but, um, it's just incredible. I've had about 40 students come through the mentorship group since I launched it in May, of 2024 and there's just been so much fruit so much fruit just really seeing people get activated discovering what's on the inside of them and stepping up and starting to flow you know my joy is not just to prophesy over everyone but it's to start activating people and just to start see them prophesying and so this is this is the joy this is the purpose of the mentorship group and also to lay good strong healthy new covenant foundations you know, and which are, you know, the foundations of the prophetic, but as there's a whole supernatural realm that we need to learn about and engage with. And some of you guys have been tracking with me for months and it's time to jump in. It's time to jump into the mentorship group. So why not do it now? Well, I'm offering, offering a discounted rate of $444, 444, it's regular 500. And there is a payment plan, but the payment plan is not discounted. So I would love to have a few of you guys jump in and join us for tomorrow. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hello, Leanne Bontrager, Colette, Sa Colette Saxon, and Sarah Machok. Tina Leader, good to see you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Love you guys. Bless you. May the peace of the Lord rest on you. Have a great night.